We're featuring this brand for the first time on the channel and they go by Beitong, which are known to be the number one in China, which is no small feat. Now this product has been sent for review, all opinions are my own and they get to see the video at the same time as everybody else. And we've been in contact for a few weeks now, so I'm super excited to see what this is all about. And so let's not waste a second more. Hi, I'm Clef and you're watching Game Tech Talk. Ashura 2 Pro Plus near link version and I want to stress this because you have this controller with this exact name but you have a few different variations of them and this is the latest that they have put out on market and the thing that defines it from any other options that exist on the market is the near link technology which will provide up to 2000 hertz polling rate i'm not sure if the international market has a different box but there's a lot of what i can only assume is chinese on the box so there's not a whole lot that we can go over by looking at it but rest assured that we'll leave no stones unturned during the video starting with the unboxing so of course we have the controller a usb a to usb c cable nothing special about it it is not braided regular cable and it's also not very flexible, it's quite firm, branded with what I would assume is probably Beitong and Chinese characters. And then last but not least, an instruction manual. Gives you a little bit of an overview on the controllers, shows you how you can power it on and off, connect to PC, they're different, social media, and of course, how to connect to Android TV, Switch, mobile devices, UI devices, the function description, battery, and talking a little bit about the app to personalize it even further. So let's just jump straight in and get a feel for the controller. In terms of the ergonomic, it kind of has this similar Xbox-like shape, but it's actually different enough. I'd say it's somewhere in between what the Switch Pro controller and an Xbox controller feels like. It has this pearly, very faint beige, but this pearly incandescent kind of feel to it. So when the light strikes it just right, it kind of changes colors and it looks like a pearl. And then with what we could describe as mint kind of accent, that aqua like color, very much like the look of this controller. And then we have a little bit of silver and a little bit of see-through accents. Really love the look of it. We have mechanical face buttons, feels very, very nice. We have what is an extremely low travel tactile D-pad, but I really like the feel and the edges. I'm excited to test that. You have sticks that are not a very high tension, so very easy to maneuver. They are a Hall effect, so no drift but they do specify in their promotion material that they have their own tweaking in terms of the algorithm so i'm excited to put that through its paces tactile quite muted shoulder buttons feels very nice clicks from everywhere analog triggers extremely silent and also requires a little bit more of pressure at the bottom of the actuation i feel like the implementation is fine but Usually I prefer something that is more direct with just a little bit of a stop at the end. And then you have the tactile buttons, which are extremely audible. Very satisfying click, mind you, but you hear them. And again, a very, very short travel tactile. In fact, it's rare that you hear me say that, but I find that these ones feel almost more like a dome button than they feel uh, than they do a tactile. So maybe that's what it is, because I, I feel like I hear that bounce back of that little metal dome, if you know what kind of button I'm referring to, membrane stop button. And same goes for the home button. Now, when it is in pairing mode, this is what you'll see, the lights go off. And a very interesting thing with this control is how you close it because if I hold this button it's only gonna switch modes so you want to hold back and B that's probably the only shortcut that you're gonna have to remember with this controller because in terms of shortcut there's not a whole lot of it pretty straightforward talking about the ergonomic and feel it holds very nicely the back buttons I find I can really only use with this finger and it kind of goes around like this it holds very nicely. I like the grip, I like the ergonomics, I really like the sticks. They're kind of unique. I don't recall having sticks like that before. They are somewhere in between what I would consider to be a slightly concave and flat stick at the same time. You have just a little bit of an angle on the edges 
and then right down the middle it's flat and then you have a little bit of texture on the edges with those four little dents on the diagonal quadrants. They don't seem to have anything pertaining to anti-skid, anti-scuff, but they do glide nicely overall if that could potentially be a concern over time. One thing I noticed with these sticks is usually you can pop them off and you know they have their sockets so you can just pop them back in, but these ones no matter how, I'm, how much I pull up, it's just really tightly held together by the housing of the controller. Then you have your USB-C at the top and you may have noticed but one thing that is special with this one is your dongle for your 2000 Hertz pulling rate is hidden in the controller itself. It's held by a small magnet, so there's no way this is coming undone. So this is what you'll use to get your wireless 2000 Hertz pulling rate, but you can also get it through wired if you want. It's off to a very good start. So for the next part, let's go talk about software and testing and aim labs in Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Let's fly through the software. So top left, you have your basic settings, which is the splash screen that you see. And you can do a quick edits from the main splash page. My configuration is where you can import and export your profiles. Button test is where you can test everything. Now to the right of it, you'll see configuration mode. You can swap from a PC to a Nintendo Switch mode and you can see your battery meter. Now each of these modes have a deeper, more complex menu. So we'll go through each of them. But before we do config assistant, we'll just guide you through each of those advanced settings one by one, but you can manually go to each one of them. Bottom right, you have your pulling rate. So you probably want to leave it at 2000 when using wired or dongle. And then of course, whatever you do, you can save with apply to controller with top right. Basic is where you'll do things like change the name of your controller, change your light if you want it normal or breathing. You can change the color, you have to go by set options, which are more than 15 different of them. Vibration is where you can increase and decrease the vibration. The left motor is pretty on par with what you get from Xbox. The right one, on the other hand, is very noisy. When looking at buttons, the ones where you see default are buttons where you can do macros. You can also map your M1 and your M2 to other different buttons as well as macro. In case anyone wonders, you cannot map keyboard keys. When looking at macros, you can actually do quite a lot. Of course, macros of your controller, but you, you can also change your timings, delete keys, add keys. It's a very complete tool overall in terms of macros. And when clicking on your triggers, which may not appear as obvious at first, it is also where you can address the dead zone of your triggers. So if you want to make a quick trigger for yourself, a hair trigger, you could do that as well. And you can also address the amount of time with turbo, which is up to 30 times per second. Now, when looking at joystick menu, you can address both the left stick and right stick and each of the stick can have a trigger switch. And what a trigger switch will do is when you hold a specific button that you set for yourself, it will immediately address the curve of your stick, which is a pretty unique feature. There's not a whole lot of controllers that I've tested that has this. The only other one that I can think of that comes to mind is the Razer Wolverine V3. You can also address the dead zone. Ideally, I would recommend three if you want something as minimalistic as possible. But if you want to eliminate like the small physical movement at the root of the stick, 6% is where you want to be at. And then of course you have the joystick automatic centering, which you can either close or enable. And this is an algorithm that will always make the stick default to its center most value if it doesn't sense any movements. When looking at gyro, you can set it to a button or a multitude of buttons. You can also set it to joystick. Joystick, you can choose between the left stick or right stick. Now, the one thing that is not obvious at all is where you see immediate and continued. Immediate is your yaw and continued is your roll. I don't know why they called it that. It's confusing for no reasons. What this will do is make you use the controller in a way that you want to move based off of what you want to do. Continued is usually better for FPS, whereas immediate is better for racing games. You can address the sensitivity. You can make it so that it is always on or at the press of a button or at or when holding a button. You can reverse your axis and you can address the dead zone of your gyro. And then last but not least is function. And this is where you can address a timer for your controller to go to sleep or calibrate your sticks or calibrate your triggers. And so that is it for software. Let's move on to the testing portion of the review. 
First off, you may notice that I'm using the left shoulder button to shoot. That's because I was kind of cramping with those triggers. Quite frankly, they're not my favorite. I have to come clean. And when it comes to the sticks, overall, great implementation. Hall effect, right? So they have the hall effect behavior that you would expect. But I have to say, like, especially once I was started, when I, once I was out of the initial center dead zone, it glided fairly smoothly, not too much aggressive ramping up all of a sudden, although it did happen from time to time. Now, what you're seeing are my two best runs. And I would say for the most part that I did feel something that felt more responsive than the average hall effect and definitely something I feel is good enough for aiming. Now of course I'm not the best at aiming per se but compared to all the controllers I would say that in the hall effect range this is upper echelon for me and the only way that I would best that is either with an ALPS stick or with the TMR stick but when it comes down to hall effect I think they did very, very good. They're also very easy in terms of the tension because it's a full form controller. I find that it lends itself a little bit better in terms of aiming. The one thing I was kind of struggling with, although I really like the stick caps, there were times that they were kind of being a hindrance probably because I'm not used to it. I think if I would have had something that is more traditional or something that is more familiar to me, easier to sort of navigate with the thumb, I might have actually been able to match TMR performance because as far as the SIG goes, they really do feel good. Now to go back on the triggers, it's not that they're not good or anything. They don't require a lot of force to, to action. But with that in mind, it's just the release, push, release, push, release, push that kind of it, it gets tiring. At least it did for me. So that's why I wanted to have like no distraction with my trigger. So that's why I moved to the left shoulder button. Not something I usually do. I kind of came up with this out of the blue just because I wanted a solution. I am looking to improve my D-pad testing for the time being. You'll have to bear with me as I'll stick to what I know, but eventually I would like to maybe add more games or change what games I play. Anyways, when talking about the D-pad, the feel, very nice. I mean, I'm not usually a low travel tactile kind of D-pad guy. However, because of the material that they use and the curved edges, it's actually very pleasant to navigate. And when it comes to Street Fighter, there was a little bit of a learning curve at the beginning. Like I was pulling my moves, I want to say maybe 50% of the time after even just two minutes of playing it was pretty much a very consistent not my top recommendation for d-pad in terms of what I usually look for but I would say that it's up there and it's definitely at least in the low travel tactile options out there it's the best I've seen I, I was actually quite shocked I was expecting to do worse but the feel was so good so I was kind of eh, and it turned out great so I can't complain they also have these little lines on them, which makes it easy to operate. When playing Street Fighter, I was not, I didn't notice anything weird with the diagonals. That felt also very easy. But when going into game pad tester, I was a little concerned with what I saw. But with that said, it worked great in the end. So can't really complain there. And yeah, great D-pad. It was good. It's been a good test. This is one thing I want to put out here is when grabbing this controller, when first looking at it, you see things that are different and feels different than a lot of controllers on the market. Peek and go, it could look cheap. And when holding it, it could feel cheap. To me, this is a controller that is deceiving in the right way, where at first it's not quite what you expect. And then you play with it and you're like, oh, wow. It's quite nice and that kind of summarizes my experience i do have a few cons but for the most part i would say it's a very very positive experience when trying to get the software working on my iphone it did connect with the controller but i was not able to fiddle with the settings so maybe that's something to do with the app i'm not sure but that was something that felt a little unfortunate the second con and really the biggest is the price i haven't really seen it less than 90 us dollars it's not necessarily the controller that is the most feature rich and i often talk about features on this channel and the regulars probably know that this is something i greatly value and i wouldn't go as far as saying that this is feature poor it's not there's actually a lot of things that you can do especially when leveraging the companion app but the reality is there are a lot of controllers on the market that achieve a lot more in terms of feature while also bringing great quality for the fact that they very much have what i would consider to be a premium price they're not maybe a premium feature offering but what is there is top performance especially those sticks 
These are probably some of the better Hall Effect sticks that I have used so far. And they do put on their website that they have self-tailored their own algorithm for their sticks, and I believe it. And then also their gyro implementation, while unfortunately not as feature rich as what you have on the Blitz 2, for example, but what is there does work very, very well. That's where I'm kind of going with this one is it doesn't have everything and it not every controller need to have everything but it needs to have something and it does and what is there is very 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 well implemented so for that i only have praises to give to this product but when thinking of the price it makes it harder to recommend not because it's not good so that's that's really what i want to emphasize the problem i have here is not the quality is it is that you have a lot of options on market that easily competes with this one for 10 20 us dollars less so it makes it a little harder to recommend and in no way could i tell you don't buy it because it's really good but what i would say is make sure you shop around to see if the fact that it's a little better on many aspects is enough to justify that it's also more expensive for that reason essentially capitalize on the important most aspects to you because if you were looking for hair triggers if you were looking for four back buttons if you were looking for more shortcuts on the controller that just isn't it if you're looking for a 3.5 millimeter jack you know it's not that product maybe you want more features and that's just not the product that will give you that but what is there is extremely well implemented let me know what you guys think is it a controller that you own is it a controller that you're considering owning let me know why how you feel about it all in the comments as always consider doing all the youtube things thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one peace